If you use both Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop, you might sometimes wish that you had Lightroom's easy and slick photo editing tools within Photoshop. Well, you do. Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and this is a video for amateur photographer on Adobe Photoshop's camera raw filter. Let's go. So here's an image I'm editing in Lightroom Classic, and you can see all of Lightroom's editing tools in the sidebar on the right. Lightroom doesn't have all the powerful layer and masking tools you can in Photoshop, but it is geared up much more for photographers with very direct and effective photo enhancement tools. But these aren't the only place you get these tools. In fact, they are part of the Adobe Camera Raw processing engine. And we can see this if I open this image directly in Photoshop. Now with raw files, Photoshop must first pass them through Adobe Camera Raw to process them into images it can edit directly. And although the screen layout of Adobe Camera Raw is different, you can easily see that it actually has all the same tools you get in Lightroom's develop mode. Not every image will go through Adobe Camera Raw though. If you're starting with a JPEG straight from the camera or an edited TIFF file, then Adobe Camera Raw isn't needed and doesn't launch at all. You'll plunge straight in at the deep end with Photoshop's own layering, masking and adjustment tools. What you don't get are the handy tone curve, grain, profiles, grading, transform and other tools that make Adobe Lightroom so quick and effective. Or do you? In fact, you do, but they are hidden away in the filter menu in the camera raw filter. Don't be fooled. This is a lot more than just a regular filter. In fact, it's an exact replica of the camera raw window with all the tools you get in Lightroom and the Adobe camera raw module that you get when opening raw files. Well, it's almost the same. Keep in mind that when you're editing an image in Photoshop, it's already gone through a raw development process. This means the camera raw filter doesn't offer the same highlight and shadow recovery capability you get with raw files or the full color data for changing the white balance. But it does have profiles for changing the look of your image. It has curves, color grading and color mixing, vignette and grain effects, dehaze, clarity and texture, plus automatic perspective corrections with the crop panel. Like Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, the tools in the Camera Raw filter are organized into tabs. You'll see that there are tabs for retouching, all the presets you're used to seeing in Lightroom, and even a masks tab for creating all the AI masks available in Lightroom. There are many things you can do in Photoshop that you can't do in Lightroom, but there are also many photography tools that are quicker, slicker, and just better in Lightroom. And with the Camera Raw filter, you have them all at your fingertips. The Camera Raw filter is more than just a filter. It's like a mini editor within Photoshop itself. So let's see how this could be useful with this photo. I can start with the Auto button in the Edit tab to make sure the tones and colors are optimized. Next, I can swap to the Masks panel and add an AI mask for the sky, then add some dehaze and reduce the saturation a little. What about the converging verticals in the lighthouse? That's easily fixed by swapping to the crop tab and clicking the verticals auto correct button. Lastly, what about a preset? Here's one of Lightroom's travel presets. Now, if I'm happy with all of this, I can just hit the OK button to be returned to Photoshop. All of these changes happened within the camera raw filter. So they're all baked in and there's nothing else to see. But what if you want to be able to go back and change things, just like you can in Lightroom? In this case, before you do anything else, you need to use the Convert for Smart Filters option on the filter menu. This converts your photo into a smart object, and from now on, you can go back to any filter you've applied, including the Camera Raw filter, to modify its settings. Now, so far, it might not look as if you've gained much by doing all of this in Photoshop rather than Lightroom. 
but don't forget you can take your images much further in Photoshop. For example, our lighthouse is pretty tightly cropped and you don't get any center space or the proximity of the sea. So let's choose a little using Photoshop's generative expand option. I've used the crop tool set to a wider 16 to 9 ratio and dragged out a much larger size to incorporate space to the left and above the lighthouse. In the generative text prompt field, I simply type C and leave Photoshop to do its work. Not bad at all. Incidentally, I did find I got better results by flattening the smart object layer into a regular layer before using the generative expand option. Now that's only one of the things you can do in Photoshop that you can't do in Lightroom. But if you plan more advanced editing work like adding layers, type, AI, objects and more, it's a definite advantage to have both sets of tools in one place. So that was a quick tour of Adobe Photoshop's camera raw filter and what it can do. I hope you find it useful. So thanks for watching and see you next time.